Right, joining me now is a former Zimbabwean cricketer and now cricket pundit Edward Rainsford who will be here uh, to discuss the rather unsavoury scenes that occurred on Sunday afternoon at the end of the second session in the first test match between South Africa and Australia. But before we go into that, let's give you the definition of the word sledging when it comes to cricket. Now, this is what it means. Sledging is a term used in cricket to describe the practice whereby some players seek to gain an advantage. That's the main thing. Uh, by verbally intimidating the opposing player, the purpose is to try to weaken the opponent's concentration, thereby causing him or her to make mistakes or to underperform. All right? It can be effective because the batsman stands uh, with hearing within hearing range of the bowler and certain close fielders and vice versa. The insults may be directed, may be direct or feature in conversations among fielders designed to be overheard. That is the definition of sledging when it comes to cricket. Edward, good to be with you. Tony, well. how are you? I'm very, very good. I'm fabulous. Okay. <laughs> I love the word sledging because yeah. having played international cricket, I've mm. had to take a few of those uh, yeah. words, unsavory words, and yeah. also... But it, it, there's a balance to it. It's not all about uh, it being unsavory. It's, there's also a good humored side to it, but it's just about creating that balance. And I think that's where yeah. I think international sport is just losing it a little bit. It's losing a little bit. Let's, let's, let's take a look at that incident and go straight to the actual tunnels, tunnel itself. Where I mean, Take us to what we're looking at here. So you see, this image here doesn't actually tell you the story. Mm. Uh, prior to this, uh, Quinton de Kock on the field had taken a lot of abuse. Yeah. from the Australians in terms of the sledging and you gave a perfect uh, d description of it and an analogy there of it and this one here is when it's overboiled. This, it, yeah, it's this now is... getting quite personal at this stage and I think Quinton de Kock at this stage has mm. said something which at his point has become breaking point for him. He's like I've had enough you know I've heard you all afternoon mm. and you've kept going at me and you've kept going at me but now I've had to say something personal. And I think it was just that breaking point where Quentin de Kock said what he said that actually made David Warner just explode. At the same time, so David Warner is a guy who's chirping and chirping. He's going at him, going at him the whole day. Why can't he take the same heat that uh, de Kock's been taking on the field? You see, when David, is well, David Warner is renowned for, for sledging. He, Martin Crowe, a former New Zealand legend, actually said that they must introduce red cards and yellow cards because of David Warner. Yeah. And the way that he has just been such a problematic individual on the cricket field. And let's just remember that we, we, we both have children and everybody's got kids that obviously want to look at the game and obviously want to take the positives out of it. But when you see things like that, mm -hmm. uh, you sort of start imparting the, the nasty side of the game. And you don't want your child doing that on the, on the cricket field, on the soccer field, or in the tennis field. Uh, or on the tennis court, I beg your pardon. So that is the, that's the thin line. And that visual there has probably been played out on social media, whether it's on Instagram, whether it's yep. on Twitter, and young children are seeing that. And also on the field. Like you say, he can't take it, but he's been in a history of sledging. He did it in, in, uh, in, in New Zealand. He did it at the Champions Trophy. He's been doing it in the Ashes. Yep. He actually got sent out, of, uh, sent out of the team in the Champions Trophy in 2013 because he actually got into a ballroom brawl Sledging yes. off the field, they met in the bar with Joe Root and they got into a scuffle. <laughs> so you can see it's, 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 it's so an Aussie so, thing though. So how is he a vice captain of the Australian national team? So, so their mentality is that if they give him a bit of responsibility, that sort of nasty streak in him would, would be subside, that he needs to show more responsibility and probably act as a captain or a vice captain in, in certain situations. He's actually been the captain of the Australian team in the T20 triangular between yep. New Zealand and, and England. So... Again, Dave Warner, not in, not in good light, but it's an Australian thing. Yep, we, we, we know that. Uh, there's no love lost between South Africa and Australia. Let's hear what Aidan Markram and Tim Payne had to say about some of this particular sledging in this test. Proteus Centurion Aidan Markram played down Australia vice-captain David Warner's fiery reaction to the run-out of AB de Villiers on day four in Durban. Obviously, it's natural when you play against the, the Australians that there's a lot of, of chatter on the field. Um, something I certainly don't mind. Um, something that, that really keeps me in the game and keeps me going, keeps me motivated. Um, and it never really gets out of line either. Um, not a lot of swearing and, and things like that happen. Um, there are a few here and there, but it's not the end of the world. Um, and it's, I, I believe it's part of the game. It's how the game should be played nice and hard. And 
it makes uh, success that, that bit more rewarding as well. Meanwhile, it appeared as though tempers continued to flare at the T interval, with CCTV footage from the players' tunnel showing this exchange between Warner and South African Quinton de Kock. After play, wicketkeeper Tim Payne agreed with Markram's summation, insisting the on-field banter had remained above board. Uh, well, there wasn't too much aggression, I wouldn't, I wouldn't say. I think we, we spoke to Aidan about running out, you know, their best player and, and one of the best players in the world. So um, I think, you know, had someone had run Smithy out in our team, you, you'd cop a fair bit of a ribbing. There was nothing, um, you know, aggressive or anything like that. It was just reminding of what he'd just done, trying to get him off his game the same um, as they do to us. Didn't okay, work. so those are the comments coming you know, from the other players. Are you? Uh, I'm just going to pick up on something on the back end of uh, yeah, Tim Payne's uh, uh, interview there. He talks about running out the best player in the world. A.B. de Villiers got run out. But what happened instantaneously, as soon as he got run out, Nathan Lyon actually deliberately threw the ball at A.B. de Villiers while he was lying on the floor and yeah. got fined 15% of his match fee. So Tim Payne is actually contradicting himself there in the sense that the aggression on the field had got to fever pitch. It was boiling over. And for their, one of their best bowlers to be fined 15% of their match fee wasn't because he just decided to drop the ball on, on A.B. Yep. de Villas. It was intentional. So, like I say, there was a lot of uh, aggression out there. And one of the things that a lot of people don't realize is that sledging has become more of a part of the game now because there are microphones all over the place. And the microphones that are very sensitive are behind the stumps. So they turned up pretty high because nowadays they have to use that as part of the decision review system. Yep. And so they don't know how to control that to some degree. And so what Australia did on day number two, when they went out to field, they started sabotaging the local broadcasters and the local sponsors by, by mentioning their own sponsors. They're on the, the field. At the stump, they were gathering around the stump mic and sabotaging that intentionally so that the broadcasters had to turn down the stump mics so that they could get their sledging out of the way. So it was, it was a part of gamesmanship. So if you listen to those interviews, Aidan Mockram has to, has to have some sort of balance there. And they don't talk about this now, but on the second day of the test match, it was all over the newspapers. But is, all of is, a sudden... Is, is, is this a com some kind of pressure coming in? You know, but, but it, a lot of money coming in? What is it? What's changing? Because that's not the attitude of, uh, you know, the, the players from back in the day. Or no, it isn't. But remember, not. like I say to you, the game has progressed so much. There's so much technology now. There's so much uh, attention, there, like social media, there's internet. Everybody wants to know what's going on. And with the technology, and you have to have the technology there now to sort of even out the the errors in the game, mm -hmm. it's now opened up all, you can hear the verbals, you can hear the unsavory language. And so what Australia tried to do intentionally was try and turn that mic down so they could get the words out of, out of that. And it wasn't just David Warner, it was all of them. Mm -hmm. now, if, if you go through the, the years, uh, you got, you got uh, contests between Australian, Australian players and, and other cricketers, Ambrose, uh, Wall, uh, Warren and Cullinan as well. Yeah. So many times Australians have been involved in, <laughs> in these type of incidents. You see, there's and some it's funny, always Australia. They're, they're, that's that's the point I'm trying to make here. And why is it always Australia? Okay, let me go back to so the the sledging word was first coined in 1970 in an Australian newspaper because it actually started in their domestic setup, and that's when it became quite bad. And then 1975, the ugly Australians and the Ashes. Then it was Merv Hughes. And then it was Viv Richards from the West Indies who started actually barging bowlers as a batsman. But then from there, it was about the Ashes and it was about the Australians. It was always the Australians, always the Australians. So they use that as something that really tries to throw off their opponent. Sometimes they do it overboard because if, if I rate you, I, I'm going to try and attack you more. So they were really attacking someone like A.B. De Villiers in his yeah. first batting innings. And... Yeah, it's just what, part of their what, game. What part do umpires play in all this? Uh, you, you, you right. we were chatting, you know, before this, and you were telling me about a particular incident, which is one of your worst. You were playing yeah. against South Africa and in South Africa yeah. and so forth, and uh, somebody said nice. something really nasty. It to wasn't you. nice. You, started, you didn't start crying. I didn't have <laughs> tissue. <laughs> you, you, went, you went ahead and you complained to the well, umpire. Well, I, I, I reported field. it. I reported yeah. it. But nowadays, what happens with the umpires is that they they they're lucky enough to have that stump mic. They're lucky to have the match referee. They have got a third umpire, a fourth umpire. They've got the director who's broadcasting on the day. They get the footage, they review it, they listen to it. And so what happens is once they listen to it and they feel like it's breaching the code of conduct, they, they call the player in, they give him a warning. 
uh, in this scenario, they're, they're looking at investigating it because the umpires only have jurisdiction of the, of the playing area. Mm -hmm. Now this has now gone out of the playing area. They have to look at it. Is it an abuse? Mm -hmm. Are you actually taking a swipe at someone's personality and, and so forth and mm -hmm. so on? But now the umpires and with the, with the code of conduct, what happens is that they get demerit points. And you get a demerit point. If you get five demerit points, you then uh, are sanctioned from a game. And so you can't play for a certain amount of games. And now they have the red card and the yellow card to try and... But no umpire, yeah. I don't yeah. think, will be brave enough to go to David Warner and say, this is a yellow card, I'm warning you, you need to stop it. Yeah. But they should, because you need to keep the integrity of the game at hold. This is cricket. It's, it's supposed to be the gentleman's sport. And so you need to uphold that as custodians, as former players, yeah. as players, and as the uh, umpires and the match referees. I mean, if, if watching this, for, you know, from the sidelines, you have to say, if you can give it, you must be able to take it. And totally. Clearly, there, David Warner's got a massive problem when somebody's chirping at him. Yeah, he's got an ego problem, and it, you, you bring up a very valid point. The Australians, what tends to happen is when it's going their way, they become very vocal. But when it's not going their way and you're sort of giving it back to them, they seem to want to retreat into a corner and become quite, uh, quite, quite, quite timid mm -hmm. uh, is probably the right word. So it, yeah. it act like small, spoiled brats on some occasions. Okay, uh, Glenn McGrath, the West Indies uh, uh, incident. That was uh, an <laughs> another big one. <laughs> I remember this watching as a young kid. He actually spat at him. Yes. He actually spat at him and, you know, it, it became actually a racial issue yeah. in that situation. And there was no need for that. There was no need for that. But again, who is it? It's the Aussies. They just do not know when to draw the line. And I think, and I'll come back to, and this is something the ICC and the MCC who hold mm -hmm. the, the, the rules and the integrity of the game, uh, they need to now probably take it a step forward and say to the umpires, yeah. if this happens now, give them a yellow card. Because uh, that's, that's the thing, though. You know, a lot of these uh, incidents, and, you know, they, they dock 15%, 13% of the match fee, but they're making much more money from sponsors and everything else. You know, the match fee becomes uh, you know, But nominal. how many times do you have to find a guy his match fee and hurt his pocket, and he keeps doing it? Yeah. over and over again and it's the same individuals and it's the same team mm -hmm. when would you draw the line and yeah. say let's 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 actually take care of the game let's actually hold the game close to our hearts and, and keep it as, as safe as possible because now we're mm -hmm. we're actually bringing we're actually dragging it in through the dirt yeah very true now both the captains attempted to downplay the incident at the press conference here's what they had to say um i think what was said and done um, during that interval was re regrettable on, on both sides. Um, obviously, Quinton got quite personal and provoked a, an emotional response from, from Davey. Um, and yeah, I think those things are, are not on from, from both sides. Um, you know, getting personal on the fields, uh, not on, and that's, that's crossing the line in my opinion. I think we were certainly very um, chirpy out on the field as well. Um, as far as I'm aware, we didn't get personal towards Quinton. Um, but uh, look, I, I think he, what he said got a little bit personal towards Davey, and as we saw, it certainly provoked an emotional response. Oh, absolutely. Um, you know, those things aren't on, and you, know, you, you can't be getting into someone's personal life like that. Um, you know, that's, as I said, it's not on. That's crossing the line, in my opinion. And, um, you know, right now it's obviously in the, the hands of the, the umpires and the match referee. But, um, you know, we want to see the game played in a, a good, hard um, fought way, I guess, in the next uh, three test matches. But um, obviously played within the, the spirit of the game. I think both parties, uh, they, would, they would, from what I've heard, there was a lot of personal stuff um, being said. Uh, don't know to what matter. Um, that's obviously what made it go off the field. Um, yeah, so if, if you are, and that's us included, if you want to go personal, then uh, it needs to stay on the field. Okay, so Ed, you've got Steve Smith on the one side saying it didn't get personal at all. The other captain saying it did get personal. You were actually there covering this match, and you could hear some of this banter. Was it personal? Was it not personal? Well... I don't know what game Steve Smith was at, but mm. it was very personal. Uh, it, it started off as a normal cricket match with the odd uh, sledge and the odd chirp and the odd humour. And then I think, as uh, Fafti Pasi rightly says, 
there's a point where I think Australia went overboard and it actually became breaking point for for someone psychologically in terms of the definition you've just given. You, you sort of try and break down your opponent to yeah. try and get him out. But once you don't get him out, he becomes quite aggressive and quite a, a abrasive towards you. And that's where they, they put Quinton de Kock. They really put him in a corner. And then I think it just became breaking point. And then he's uttered what he's uttered off the field. And all of a sudden, David Warner started throwing his toys out yep. the court. And I'm thinking, well, you know, get some balance here. If, if, you, yeah. if you had some balance on the field, I wouldn't have said what I said. Okay, quick, quick one, Ed. You've been there. You, you've done this. Uh, what do you think ICC should do about this? Red cards, seconds. yellow cards. I think there must be a, a point where they're going to have to say, this is now wrong. I'm warning you, please don't do it. What is, what is a red or yellow card? So the, the, yellow card will be, the yellow card would be a warning. And then the yellow card will be, okay, stop it. If you get a second yellow card, that's, that is a red card, which means you're out of the game. You're no longer allowed to come back. You cannot back, be replaced. And, now, and you cannot be replaced. Okay. All right, <laughs> there it is. We'll, we'll see. We'll see what happens. The, uh, I would have got a, a lot of red cards, by the way. <laughs> I, was, I was actually about to say. Listen, Ed, thank you so much. Thank uh, you for uh, having uh, me. Great, uh, great speaking with you. We'll catch you on on Quest of Sports as time goes on. I'm sure. Uh, and thank you for joining us. The second test will start in PE, and you can be sure we'll be following that one. Catch us uh, same place, same time next week. You've been watching a Seriously Sport. Good night. acceleration of Lance Armstrong. Is this the beginning of the end for Tom Brady? Uses his arms in triumph. Julius Jago. Has Cronier been playing well? Marion Jones, former sprint star. The reason we did it was, it was standing up against the Tyrannians in Bale. Gareth Bale, it's a terrific run. Can he go all the way?